truly carnival, but to honour and celebrate those who walk into the chaos and the evil that is war, and those who are civilians and those who are military, those who brave the censure of society and those who gave of themselves for that society, those who survived and those who did not, those who were friends and those who were enemies, none who have waded through evil, death and sorrow are untouched in body, mind or spirit. They are beloved of God and we honour them today. Amen. On this day of memory, we gather to sing and to pray. We remember the past and look to the future. On this day when the guns once fell silent, we come before you, God, seeking your peace. On this day of hope in the face of terror, we come before you, God, praying with all our heart. God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come. Help us to find the path that leads to the peaceable kingdom. Open our eyes and the eyes of the nations to find a different path through the disagreements of life in this world. In this time of story, song and prayer, may we be recommitted to being people of peace, true peace. May we catch a vision of how the world could live together. And so we echo the old prayer. Make us channels of your peace. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with us. Amen. So we prepare our hearts and minds for confession. Lord God, in the red petal of the poppy, we are reminded of the lives lost, of bloodshed, of human greed, and lives marked by grief and pain. For spoiling your creation, Lord, in your mercy, forgive us. In the green leaf of the poppy, we are reminded of the possibility of new life. Remembering the past, help us to act in the present, to bring an end to fighting and bloodshed. We pray that the desire for peace and not just extermination will thrive in the soil of human hearts. Lord, in your mercy, forgive us. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Janet and Vic will now bring us our reading. The reading is taken from Wisdom, chapter 6, beginning at verse 12. Description of Wisdom Wisdom is radiant and unfailing and she is easily discerned by those who love her and is found by those who seek her. She hastens to make herself known to those who desire her. One who rises early to seek her will have no difficulty for she will be found sitting at the gate. To fix one's thought on her is perfect understanding and one who is vigilant on her account will soon be free from care because she goes about seeking those worthy of her and she graciously appears to them in their paths and meets them in every thought. For the word of the Lord. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Matthew 25, 1-13 then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. And all 
all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet. And the door was shut. Later the other bridemaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. This is the Gospel of Christ. Hello everyone, this is my talk for Sunday. We're all gathered here to celebrate Remembrance Sunday. And it's good and right that we do remember the men and women who fought in the great wars in order to gain our freedom. Millions lost their lives as this country joined the battle to push back evil and preserve freedom. Today, we remember. But what's so special about a poppy on Remembrance Day? Well, when the fighting ceased in 1918, the mud of the battlefields was allowed to rest and nature began to be healed. And before long, wild flowers grew, and amongst them was a poppy. And the colour red reminded people of bloodshed and the sacrifice by millions of brave soldiers. And so the poppy became a symbol of sacrifice. Now we in the church also have a symbol of sacrifice, the cross of Jesus. One of his greatest sayings is, Greater love has no man than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. That's exactly what he did for us. Two great symbols of sacrifice, the poppy and the cross. The significance of the poppy as a lasting memorial symbol to the fallen was realised by a Canadian surgeon, John McRae in his poem, In Flanders Fields. The poppy came to represent the enormous sacrifice made by his comrades and quickly became a lasting memorial to those who died in the First World War and in later conflicts. And this is a poem. In Flanders Fields the poppies blow between the crosses row on row that mark our place and in the sky the larks, still bravely singing, fly, scarcely heard, amongst the guns below. We are the dead. Short days ago we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved. And now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe. To you from failing hands we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders fields. Beautiful words. I remember having to learn that poem by heart when I was at school. Remembrance services are always very emotional. It's always good to be reminded of the sacrifice of so many. And what would we do without reminders? Life without a diary would be very difficult for me. I need something to remind me when to do certain things and to be in certain places. And I know I'm not the only one. Each one of us have memories connected with certain dates. Some dates help us to remember times of great joy. Other dates cause us to remember great sadness. From time to time, we also have future dates which we're looking forward to. It could be a wedding in the family, a special anniversary or a birthday, or for a friend, a card from the Queen maybe, a date to move house, a date in the diary to see a friend and share a meal. Today is Remembrance Sunday. Today, people will gather in different locations, COVID permitting, to remember and lay wreaths of poppies for the fallen. 
As Jesus and his disciples prepared for the Passover, they were preparing to remember. Remember a time when God used Moses. At the tender age of 80, God used Moses to deliver his people from slavery in Egypt. Pharaoh had them in bondage, but God was ready to free them. So when Pharaoh refused to set them free, God sent signs and plagues, but Pharaoh still refused. Finally, God said that the firstborn son in every family would die. But Moses was to tell every Hebrew family to slaughter a lamb, take some of the blood and spread it on the frames of their doors. God said, The blood will be a sign for you on the houses where you are, and when I see the blood, I will pass over you. All that God said came to pass. The Hebrew people were finally set free, and God asked them to remember the fact that he, God, had rescued and delivered them. So, 1500 years later, Jesus and his disciples were preparing to remember the time when God passed over the Hebrew houses. They were preparing to remember God's salvation. At the end of the Passover meal, Jesus said some radical things. Later, after his death and resurrection, the Holy Spirit enabled his disciples to remember Jesus' words and to understand what Jesus meant. That final Passover meal with Jesus was to be remembered and celebrated. As we prepare to celebrate the Lord's Supper, Holy Communion, we remember Jesus. We remember Jesus' words. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Jesus and the disciples had slaughtered a lamb for the Passover. We remember Jesus is the Lamb of God. We remember the shed blood of Jesus. We do this to remember Jesus, lest we forget. But however, we also look forward, just like a child looks forward to Christmas, with excitement we look forward to the return of Jesus and we remember his words regarding this meal of remembrance. Jesus said, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer, for I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfilment in the kingdom of God. So let's remember Jesus. Let's look forward to Jesus. I found these words recently. They're new to me, but many of you might recognise them. It's called Welcome to the Table. This is a feast of the heavenly wine and God invites you to sup. The juices of the living vine are pressed to fill the cup. O oh, bless the Saviour, ye that eat with royal dainties fed. Not heaven affords a costlier treat, for Jesus is the bread. The vile, the lost, he calls to them. Ye trembling souls appear. The righteous in their own esteem have no acceptance here. Approach ye poor, nor dare refuse the banquet spread for you. Dear Saviour, this is welcome news that I may venture to. If guilt and sin afford a plea and may obtain a place, surely the Lord will welcome me and I shall see his face. Amen. A prayer and evening of remembrance from our beavers at their meeting before half term. We took the flags to the Hope Hill Chapel and paraded across the main field.
A prayer of remembrance. Lead me from death to life. From falsehood to truth. From despair to hope. From fear to trust. From hate to love. From war to peace. Let peace fill our heart. Our world. Our universe. Forever. Amen. Will something our act of remembrance. They shall not go old as we that have left grow old. Age shall not weary them nor the years condemn at the going down of the sun and in the morning we will remember them.
live as good neighbours to honour the past, to care for all who are in need, and to live at peace among ourselves and with all people. Saying together, Lord God, Father of all, we pledge ourselves to serve you and this neighbourhood, to bring relief to all who are in need, and comfort to the sad, lonely and distressed. Keep us ever mindful of the struggles and achievements of former generations, and of this place where we make our home now and in the days to come. Amen. Strengthen our hearts and hands and minds, O Lord, to work together for peace, to see you in one another, and to seek your kingdom above all things, that your will may be seen to be done, and your kingdom come. Through Jesus Christ, the Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Amen. Jesus said, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And the Lord shall be with you. So virtually we offer each other the sign of the peace. Peace be with you. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We give thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Blessed are you, Lord God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise forever. From the beginning you have created all things, and all your works echo the silent music of praise. In the fullness of time, you made us in your image, the crown of all creation. You give us breath and speech, that with angels and archangels and all the powers of heaven, we may find a voice to sing your praise. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. How wonderful the work of your hands, O Lord. As a mother tenderly gathers her children, you embrace a people as your own. When they turned away and rebelled, your love remained steadfast. From them that you raised up Jesus, our Saviour, born of Mary, to be the living bread in whom all our hungers are satisfied. He offered his life for sinners, and with a love stronger than death, he opened wide his arms on the cross. On the night before he died, he came to supper with his friends, and taking bread, he gave you thanks. He broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. At the end of supper, taking the wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Christ is the bread of life. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, Lord Jesus, until you come in glory. Father, we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. We remember his dying and rising in glory, and we rejoice that he intercedes for us at your right hand. Pour out your Holy Spirit as we bring before you these gifts of your creation. May they be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy things in your presence, form us in the likeness of Christ, 
and so selfishly for a living ten twenty year old glory. We went at the last with all the faith to the vision of that eternal splendour for which he has created us, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by him and with him and in him, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. Believing and trusting in the promises of God, as our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. We are here because Jesus has called us, strangers and friends, believers and doubters, the certain and the curious. It's always a mixed company that Jesus gathers and invites to his table where he meets us, and through him, we who are different, are joined to each other. And so in this moment, wherever we are, we say, come, Lord Jesus. Come, fill us with your love, your peace, your mercy, and your grace. For now, we need you more than ever. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our soul and body to be a living sacrifice, so that thou in the power of your Spirit to give and work to your praise and glory. Amen. God grants to the living spread, to the departed rest. To the Church, the Queen, the Commonwealth, and all people, unity, peace, and concord. And to us, and all God's servants, life everlasting. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with you and those you love and pray for, this day and always. 